or good day or good evening or good night or good day or whatever it happens to be at this particular time. Welcome to the First Design Podcast. We don't have an official name for it yet. I'm Shaka Sheckman and I'm joined here by Mr. Michael Boer. Yeah, I don't think, do you want to start us off with our first discussion for the day? First our first topic? discussion was going to be uh, a couple of crazy problems to solve. Yeah, I think that's a good one. So and uh, we also agreed that the rule we were going to sort of institute for each episode was that we were trying to turn design into something which is not word specific. Yeah. So for today's particular one, I've made two mental notes. One is no swearing, the other one is no use of the word design. I can't promise on the first one. Yeah, true. <laughs> no word design. All right, cool stuff. What, what problems did you come up with? Uh, so my first main problem, I've got two to start off with, is a stunt motorcycle survive, or allow a, a stunt motorcyclist to survive his crash and then break the underwater speed record which is apparently 33 knots only bloody hell <laughs> what do you got for us? I came up with a couple of interesting ones one oh. is uh, my pet hate uh, mm. a sort of hands free micro dishwasher would Ooh, be yeah. great uh, another one would be a, a shower specifically designed for air guitar champions <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Maybe I need to rephrase this one a little bit, but uh, it started out life as a naughty student punishment room that got Ooh, changed yeah, to, yeah, yes, please. to, to uh, <laughs> uh, let's call it poor study habit student calibration room, uh, the ideal student workstation, uh, functional superhero gear, Ooh. and then I had a pretty cool idea in the shower this morning, which is uh, we all like listening to music. Music is mixed by people that know how to mix it. Sure. But dogs might enjoy music as well. Um, I don't okay. know what they might listen to, but I thought a sort of DJ kit for dogs to create music for other dogs would be a good idea. Yes, yes. And then a sort of, uh, uh, if you jump through a red light punishment system that could be widely implemented. I've been thinking about a lot about that, but yes, definitely. <laughs> so I think the first thing to sort of point out is that these are not designs these are just problems and yeah, at this exactly. stage they are poorly construed yeah yeah, 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 yeah you need, need to probably better define them oh I'm trying to think which one i like that i think with the, the the dog dj kit i'm worried that exists i wonder if you actually look it up it actually might exist it probably <laughs> does but it, it might be a fun one to unpack just in case so that, you know to see how you can actually unpack a problem and the fact that you're not going to find this in a textbook uh you're not going to be yeah. able to use the internet much for it <laughs> um you know so we could basically come up with a list of how we would investigate these problems yeah um, and you'd have to do that before you were to try and, and even solve like it. tackle it you even get close to it yeah. all right so let's do that one first then which one the, let's try that dog one just the dog one. Like <laughs> there we go the square okay all right so specifically the statement was what to allow dogs to be djs yeah, to make to make music, etc., for other dogs. Oh, okay, so allow dogs to make music. Do dogs? I mean, what is music to dogs? So the the first thing which I think students need to try and understand is that there are always multiple users. Uh, so there are multiple victims of a problem, and mm-hmm. then multiple users of what might eventually solve it. Yeah. So the first thing to do in any design is to basically role play. <laughs> Yes, yes. Do you, do you want to be a dog? No, I'm not. I mean, yeah, I can imagine. I'm, I'm not barking or anything like no, that. No, no, no. You don't have to be the dog. Um, all right. So. All right, so... So, obviously, no high-pitched noises. So, it's that. So, it, I'm going along the route of trying to find what kind of sound bands am I now first targeting. And that's true. The thing is, dogs can hear a wider range than us, so we have got no idea what dogs can hear. Yeah. Dogs and us can only hear what we hear, not the other way around. Exactly. So there's, so the, there's the audible range. Yeah. So like the first question is to the, the Muppets that design speakers, can they design <laughs> speakers that can do full dog hearing range? And then do all dogs hear the same? Old dogs, do they suffer hearing loss? Yeah. So there are all kinds of questions about the, the audible range. Okay, yeah, so no, definitely have to sort out that. I mean, Obviously, that, there shouldn't be any problems with uh, circuitry and electronics in the spot. No, 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 no I'm sure you'd be, could do it. you'd be able to arrange... To have the, the, the speaker, I'm sure. Made. So let's let's focus on how a human does DJ. Uh, we'd use fingers, we'd use voice prompts, etc. What would the dog use? 
Let, let's go. So let's actually look rather than said as a person. Okay, so well, a dog has paws, face. No fingers. Now well, let's break the face down a little bit. Dogs got a little bit more on their face that they could use to make decisions, to uh, control things. Well, that's why I'm thinking actually going the route of a uh, sort of disabled person. Yeah. You get systems for people that are disabled that then allow them to manipulate control systems and stuff True. with... So, so if we focus on how a dog, a dog with their face yeah. and what they could do is slightly different to a disabled person. Yeah. What could a dog use that's on their face as uh, things to switch and choose, etc.? And the thing is, uh, the suction pressure in a dog's nose is quite large. So you could use pressure around a pressure switch to yeah. make decisions, whereas okay. a person couldn't because our nose points down, not outwards. Yeah. Okay, so pressure control. Tongue, I'm sure. And also, a dog's nose is wet, so you could actually use that. A bit like how finger tracks on an iPad. A dog could probably use their nose to do something dog like that. A dog could use his nose. A dog's nose is always wet, isn't it? They're sick like the nose isn't wet. What is that? I'm not a vet shark. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> My dog's nose is always wet. <laughs> All right, fair. we'll go with the assumption okay, for so now. <laughs> near the nose, there are whiskers. Whiskers could be used for something. Yeah, I sort of... There's uh, the tongue. Yeah. Uh, their teeth. Yeah. Yeah, especially bite strength. No. Bite on something. There's actual hole next to the nose the dog could use that to make switches and oh, yeah, things around and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially one of the bigger ones. So that's just the dog's face. So we could even make this thing for a disabled dog because if they had their face, they, there's enough stuff there. Even eyes. If they have a tracking system that picks up the blinking. So as the dog blinks, it then... And what's next to dog eyes? Their eyebrows. Their eyebrows are very expressive. They're yeah, quite yeah. powerful as well. But further back, they've got ears. Oh, oh yeah, geez, ears, I'd say, would be more expressive than the eyebrows, I'd imagine. So without being a vet, um, <laughs> without necessarily knowing too much about my own dog, I know that it's got these features, and these features could be built in with modern tech to make the dog. And if I look at that, we've got eight things. So basically, if a dog was trained, hmm. that would be the same as what we could do with, say, eight fingers. Exactly, yeah. And they can do them independently, simultaneously. And we're completely ignoring paws and their paw control and things like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, so, yeah, that's just dog controls with face alone. So, yeah, so, so there'll be enough to actually then control the system. Um, the training will be something else entirely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm trying to think what else there could be to this. So, Let's, let's assume we've exhausted our, our potential, we've gone and had a look on, uh, on what Google can tell us, and we now start to say, all right, back to the audibility range, back to, well, what do we know about dogs? What do they really like? And how, how say, have humans evolved in the last hundred years and dogs have just sort of kept up with the times? Lazy bastards. Uh, I mean, a hundred years ago, the dogs didn't sit on the couch and watch Game of Thrones. Yeah. So dogs, there were far more noises around the house. Um, heating was sort of centralized. Um, families lived around, you know, the sort of central table, etc., as opposed to what it is now. Are we saying this is becoming a thing of when you're away from the home, the dog can manipulate to make it sound like you're home? You have it in one. <laughs> <laughs> that the dog is should really be able to open the curtains. The dog should be able to, you know, run a bath, do whatever they want. And when they lonely play sounds, so it sounds like your human is around. And if the dog could cook you dinner instead of the other way around, that would be marvellous too. It's, it's the butler dog, no longer the DJ <laughs> dog anymore, it's the butler dog. <laughs> he'll cook you dinner, but he'll eat it first That's before true. you get it. <laughs> Alright. Right, so if, if we go back to the problem, it was yeah. a sort of DJ thing for dogs. So we needed to know how to link a dog into this particular thing. Yeah. Uh, you could easily, quite easily design earphones for dogs. So they could be in control of the, the sort of um, mix. And I'm sure they exist actually. So yeah. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure, I mean, dogs can hear sounds through uh, sort of conventional speakers. Yeah. Uh, they might just have to be slightly modified. And in terms of, um, all the tech that's involved in tracking eyes or eyebrows or uh, whiskers or something like that, all of that stuff could be 
pretty easily made. Yeah, uh, the components exactly. themselves wouldn't be too difficult to to do. Uh, how much difference would there be between the different kinds of dogs? Okay, so size is the predominant thing. Yeah. Uh, but if we focus on the face. Okay, so in terms of face aspects, there. Well, there's one kind of dog that's all of that merged into one ugly thing on the front. It's called a pug. Yeah, it'd no, quite exactly. To make a pug a DJ. Yeah, and no, especially the nose factor or the or the pressure control with yeah. that 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 would probably be thing. So you might have to have a, a customizable thing. So these are all available controls that you can click and plug and play into your device yeah. in such a way that the your dog can then use it. Um, I said right, and any dog with a sort of conventional kind of long nose would. Um, Maybe be able to achieve better better functions. Yeah, exactly. And one uh, one of the bigger ones with bigger jowls can then get that extra control. All right. So that yeah, that you'd be able to do, and you probably make more money because then you can custom you can sell custom additions to your unit. So that would work. The order, and then yeah, the. the and obviously, you could break them down into the primary functions, so the most important things to the, the lesser functions. So, for example, a, a head shake, you know how a dog, when it gets water in its ears, will shake its head. That yeah. could mean something, but that's done less frequently than moving eyebrows or biting down on something or using the nose to sniff something. Okay, yeah, so it'd be a study then of what's the most common features or traits with the dogs, what can they most easily do themselves, and then starting with those and developing those. And that could be perfect, uh, that's a perfect project for AI. Hell yeah. So you basically would, would eventually, um, you know, machine learn what, what the dog would actually like. And that would just use the dog's face. Yeah. Currently right. doesn't need the neck, doesn't need the shoulders, doesn't need anything else. And you think what everything else the dog can do, there's, there's the dig function, there's the poke function, there's the scratch a leg function, there's wag the tail, there's... Uh, I mean, with this alone, you could basically have it attached to your dog permanently. They don't have to go to a station. It's just something that fits around them like a oh, collar. You've committed the fatal flaw of jumping into a concept. <laughs> <laughs> so what you should never do with design is yes. jump into an idea. You always have to try and define the problem first, don't yes, you? Yes, yes. However, there are two ways to do this. And we will cover this in, in later podcasts, the sort of levels to design. Yeah. But the first one would be... You know, the cheapest version of this would attack just the face of the, of the dog, whether it's mm. attached to the face or whether it's something yeah. that you put its face into or whether it's something that you sort of set up on a table with a bunch of loose components, that would be decided as the design progresses. Um, or whether this thing takes, the, you know, uses the full body functions of a dog, yeah. um, including the possibly the piss function when the song's finished. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think it depends on how many... Con- so, it would then come down to what you actually want the animal to then do. Yes. Because once you know what you need it to do, you know what kind of controls you need. And then from that, you can work out, is face alone enough, or do we have to then expand it? And if you're designing this for a Jack Russell or a Great Dane, uh, you might not necessarily be able to use the same face functions, or maybe you are. Yeah. But if you are going to use the dig function or the dog's shoulders, or, or basically have the dog run on... on, on Pick yeah. colors and shift their center of gravity to move things around yeah, yeah, yeah. you then have to design a different thing and only then would structural loads and things oh sort yeah of no, that's, that's the last thing you know, say you're worrying about each and each one of these options from pressure control to tongue sensing each one of those is going to have options in itself so each one of these would have i mean if you just pick the nose function uh there's the nose contact there's nose pressure uh dogs can wiggle their nose and at least Two, two directions. Yeah. Um, from what I can tell, they can use a mixture of nose and and tongue as well. Yeah. So I mean, if you think about interacting with a with a, a touch screen, the whole one finger versus two fingers versus three, it shouldn't be that difficult for a, for a dog to be able to do exactly the same things. Yeah, varying levels of blow and sniff in as well. Very much. So. All right. So in terms of this, there's. That, that would be how you would tackle the problem. It is a little bit on the ridiculous side, sure, but it's not? not impossible. Yeah. Uh, the worst of it is sort of over. I don't think we've left anything out. No, I, I think there would be enough, that's certainly enough to start off with, do quite a bit of research on what dogs can do. Mm-hmm. Do quite. I mean, look, I, I'd say that the bigger thing would be defining as to how far you want to take this. Is it a dog butler or dog DJ? That's and, true. And, and both are viable. 100% right. And if you come up with this thing that can do this for dogs, um, what could it do for 
disabled people, yeah. uh, perhaps other animals, uh, yeah. service dogs. So instead of it being for uh, play and pleasure, for service dogs, for police dogs, bomb squad, dogs in airports, um, dogs in hospitals. Not to say obviously that you have to design it for every single one of them immediately. Correct. You pick one. Right? That, that, that's the particular route you want to take with that problem. Define it as such and then take that route. But. And I think where, where this, is, this is going is that each one of these functions on a dog could be designed as a separate individual design project, which is part of a bigger, a bigger range of things. Yeah, um, exactly. And only one of them might actually end up being useful for, for something else. Yeah, yeah. So right. it's, it's a bit like the space race, and it's something which involves the, the facial muscles, um, teeth and, and gum moisture levels, or, or, or panting <laughs> rate as the dog's <laughs> excitement of how rocking this tune is going to be. Uh, there could be medical uh, byproducts uh, that come out of that. No, exactly. Especially, yeah, it's, um, yeah, especially I think in terms of the disabled kind of aspect there for assistance. All right, and I think we're going to throw in sort of, uh, well, they're not quite pills of wisdom because they're not really that valuable, but they <laughs> Little, little tidbits if you like yeah but the first thing to do is your first idea is just your first idea yeah, very so much this one you park it go have a beer come back and you'll come up with a whole lot of different things that you might modify this for I hate cats um, but it could be modified for them yeah yeah the cat next door has been pissing off your dog how do we actually get it to control system so that I can get revenge on the cat I think I've just modified this it is now <laughs> a, a, a dog to torture cats <laughs> machine Ethically, you probably shouldn't always tackle that one, but that's true. That's why we study that course. All right, so that's, that's basically one idea. All right, cool. Uh, done. Uh, sure. Should we try another one? Go play the time for it. Yeah, I, I quite liked the one that you uh, you proposed yesterday about the double arm amputee coffee thing. Yes. All right. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, allow a double arm amputee to make coffee. So of course the first thing we do is there are a series of questions and uh, I just want to use an example of thinking about things from a different different perspective. Sure. And the example is, let's say, um, Prof Reed wants a CCTV camera installed. Okay. Right. But he wants it installed so he can monitor how lecturers perform in class. That okay. CCTV camera <laughs> system needs to be designed in a particular way or sure. specified. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's assume that that same CCTV camera wants to be um, or needs to be used by the lecturers to check uh, lecture attendance. You need more of the facial recognition, type, yeah, AI type stuff. Definitely. Uh, the heights, the levels will be completely different. Yeah. Uh, let's assume it's from the. Um, the baristas down at Okoa to work out how many of our students bring their cups into our building and what's the split between humanities and engineers, <laughs> that those cameras would need to be slightly different. Yeah, I know, you're looking at different information, different diversities. If we wanted to track where our students go during breaks when they're not working on their design projects. Or any other course for that or matter. any other courses, uh, that would be a completely different um, system. So yeah. a CCTV camera system, you need to know who's using it for what purpose. Exactly. Because it's not, nothing is generic. Yeah. Everything is specific. Yeah, yeah. So, double arm amputee. Are you going to role play as a double arm amputee? I will be doing so. Fine. All right. So, everything that you do, you're not allowed to use your arms for. Okay. Right. So, this is for a double arm amputee. Uh, do we need to specify legs. what kind of amputee to what level? Do we just say like shoulders down just to negate? Just... Gosh. I, I think worst case you don't have arms. Yeah, okay, cool. So complete, okay, right, fair enough. Cool, so um, <clears throat> we're going to make some armless coffee. Armless coffee. What kind of coffee do you like, Mr. Shen? Oof. Are you Nescafe? Are you an espresso? Uh... I do like a good espresso every now and then, yeah. Okay, but like from, okay. from bean to espresso, or are you an espresso pod chaff? No, 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 beans. Let's get beans. Uh, proper beans. Yeah, yeah, no, beans. Beans to be ground. All right, so I'm just going to ask you some questions control. about your daily life because right. obviously if, if you're worried about coffee, you're able to do some of the other things. Yeah. Um, how do you shower? Uh, you push your chest up against the tap. You can actually push it that way around, I'd imagine, I think. A uh, sort of nipple maneuver. A, a nipple maneuver. I suppose you could use your mouth, but the damage to your teeth would just be irreparable. So you just learn to develop a bit of a harder chest and just open those taps. Vod, you can. The tap, I guess. 
Unless the tap is one of those things that pulls out, it depends on your mm. tap and shower. How do you uh, how do you wash your hair? Uh, you get those soap dispensers now. So you get those soap dispensers where you where you with your hand you would normally push against them. Mm. But now you just push your head against them and you pre- present it in such a way. And then I guess what you do is you. Well, it'd be nice if you get someone to install like a like a carpet or something, like, uh, a, a rough mat- material, and then you can rub your head against the shower. Right, wall. This is getting quite graphic. Let's, let's move back. <laughs> Why to shower the, first? <laughs> back to the back to the kitchen. Please do. Um, in terms of uh, this is for someone who's got uh, no assistant. Okay, no assistant. Uh, right. Uh, do you have a service dog to help with tasks? I think it certainly make life easier, but I don't think it's a, yeah. Okay, service okay. dogs are normally quite big, right? The yeah. Labrador size. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it's like Labrador. Okay, so here's another question. How do you get things out of the fridge? Dog does it for me. How does a dog reach the top shelf? Whew, get a smaller fridge, I'd say, to start. Uh, and then how do you get eggs out of the fridge? I'm pretty certain I've seen a dog get eggs out of the fridge. They can be gentle if they want to. Yes, they could, but everything is okay, yeah, no, no. designed differently. Yeah, everything, yeah, no, every, certainly, yes. I, you, you basically, you have a double door, half size mini fridge, basically. So your fridge is on a lower level so the dog can get to it. Sure. Um, and then potentially for, yeah, I mean, you might have to get a custom one made for your freezer unit or get a chest freezer for that if you need stuff frozen in that regard, certainly. Okay, so. Conventional kitchens are designed because humans have got arms and humans are statistically a certain height. Exactly. So countertops, basins, the kettle, everything is at a certain height. But for a double arm amputee, would everything need to be status quo? In fact, you probably want it the otherwise. Because I'm a double arm amputee, I'm not a double leg amputee. That's true, but you could do a lot more with your legs if you were seated. I, I, I'm thinking like you basic, I mean, look, the, the hygiene side aside, you and you keep clean feet you basically have a sh- like a your countertops are 30 centimeters above the ground mm. coffee machines and stuff are now easy i can grip my toes and i can quite easily manipulate those coffee clickers and stuff like that now that's true uh so you basically have to the house would be completely yeah completely you'd different. have to renovate it completely and there's obviously the problem in that we are bipeds we've only got two legs and i'm I mean, obviously, my balance sucks because I've got arms and I don't have to. <laughs> don't have to do that. Don't have to yeah. have to balance too much, but balance could obviously get a little bit better. Yeah. But you're then thinking about the task involved in making coffee. So let's assume you are a coffee aficionado. You start with the beans, yeah. and I've got to open the packet of beans. Now you can't grip it with your knees. No. And use your teeth. Um, you need something to grip it. So you're going to need some generic thing which is, I don't know, works in the same way as a mechanical vice or something like that, which is you can get things into it or your service dog could put things into it. Yeah. You can grip it and then something to, to open things. I'm just taking a, a quick detour along the route of a... a, 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 a a third leg I mean I'm going down the concept I know I shouldn't but uh, along the route working backwards uh, a third leg that allows you to balance so your other leg then can be used more freely and maybe become somewhat more dexterous maybe or the third leg is actually something that you can use to then actually be a manipulator manipulator. so if if it was the low cost option and it's basically just a fixed balancing balancing yeah just uh, top one that's a that's a pretty good design. The problem is, how do you get it onto and off of you? So you literally have to design it. That I mean, if this thing came off and it fell on the floor, how yeah. on earth would you get it back? No, on? no, exactly. So it's this has to be something which is specifically tailored so that the dog can attach it to you and detach it from you. Yeah. Once that's on, yes, agree with you. You can then yeah, uh, okay. balance on it. You can uh, you can move things around. Okay. And then it doesn't matter whether you want to make coffee or anything else because no. then you've you've freed you something up. At the same time, yeah, okay, so I mean, getting back to the coffee and opening that coffee bag, if you can hold it in place, whether it's potentially, so you, you get your shopping done, instead of putting it in cupboards, you're now putting it in some kind of like a, a clamp system. 
So you just you shut it and the moment the system senses, that, let's say for example, that there is the new item there, it grips it with the perfect pressure so it doesn't overdo it. And then it's a case it just needs something to tag and pull. It's, it will hold it in place for you. Uh, in which case you could, get the, you could train the dog to open up your coffee bag for you potentially. Correct, so basically using the, the principles of physics where either you, you have pressure or you use a force or something like that to dispense things in a very sort of easy to use manner. Okay, then there's the, um, by using a, obviously you're grinding the beans, yeah, you have to be using a coffee grinder, yeah, uh, a machine, and we're not cheating by having the beans put into the coffee machine, so you have to use your nose to hit the button, this is that. Uh, are, we, are we going, you know, yeah, yeah, no. yeah we, we, we have to, we have to go the, the, the professional route here. This is a cheap route where you've got to measure out the, uh, <laughs> the amount of, of ground beans, you've then got to put it in, you've got to stomp it down, and then you've got to sort of you know, polish up your guns to, to twist and wrangle the, uh, <laughs> the breech mortar pistol. Uh, yeah, okay. Challenge number two then. Well, A, it's first getting the, the coffee beans into that. So the coffee beans can be done with a force in one direction, though. Whereas yeah. putting the coffee in, there's an alignment function. We've now got yeah. an extra degree of freedom. And one leg, not able to do that. I, I think at the same time, if it's something that has to be done for coffee, it needs to be done for everything else. You, you can't have the coffee relocator and then next to it you've got the water relocator and your milk relocator Correct. Uh, and things. So you, you need a relocation system. So from your pressure held coffee beans to then going to a, 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 store, a, a container of some sort. Um, you probably need to design some form of Wallace and Gromit type thing where you know you dispense the beans, the beans would go yeah. on a shoot, so you don't manually have to transport them in a cup or something. They they sort of would go in a low cost option to the grinder, grind it. Or you have like a like a hose that hangs over everything with a suction device. You just your toes grip it, pull it down to that area, sucks up, move it to the next area, dispense it. I'm thinking of uh, sort of sushi restaurants with a sort of little travel aid to convey belt, yeah. which might be the best yeah. way to get your dinner to the couch. Uh, might be the best way to get um, you know the garbage, uh, empty beer cans from the couch to the bin. All right, so there's there's another way, but it doesn't help us with the coffee. It just Still doesn't help with the coffee. Around. Yeah, move stuff around. Then okay, yeah, uh, well, and yeah. Again, fatal flaw. We jumped into concepts. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Tracks, it could be the dog. It could be yeah, like, something to move things around. Something to move move it around. Um, and then put it in your, your coffee machine. We, we're using a stock standard coffee grinder of some sort, where the hand My ground... one, you've got to turn upside down to get the beans out, which is an interesting... Obviously, oh. obviously you'd have to be a stupid one to buy. <laughs> yeah. I've got two arms and I can do <laughs> Oh, okay. So at what point do we assume that the person has to have stock parts or has a little bit of somewhat uh, sensibility in, in what he purchases? Well, I think then that is sort of discrimination on... on no, that is. So that's very bad of me. I apologise. And, and capitalists, and, and if they want a fancy coffee machine and a grinder that's impossible to use, and he's a, an NQF level 9 PhD qualification, then, then fine. But damn, they should be able to do so. All yeah. right, so the, the problem is to use the coffee grinder and up in the grounds and then install the coffee device that's filled with grinds into the machine requires the same skill set. There's a there's yes. vertical motion, there's a rotation motion, but the rotation's in a, about a different axis. Yeah. If you think of the human body, uh, it's it's sort of a bit like using your arm to put in a light bulb. So you could use something which is torso connected yes. to do it. And the main thing is, in terms of alignment, it's difficult to do it if it's a chest mounted. But yeah. your shoulders are still functional. Yeah, exactly. And your shoulders, you could do pretty fine adjustments. You could bend your legs to govern height. And we can use that as a rotation mo uh, motion to, if for grinding something, man have a manipulating device and such that your shoulder can create a rotation which allow for a rotation which then can... And rotations can be amplified by mechanisms, counterweights, springs, all that good stuff. Yes, yeah. Fine, perfect. Okay. Coffee is now ground. Let's, can we say the coffee is The coffee is ground, yeah. Coffee is ground. And now it gets up, we have to upend it or scoop it out. Upend it. Upend it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because otherwise the, the, the scooping out implies the use of tools. Okay, which right. is so a, you've, got, you've got two working legs, you've got a torso, you've got shoulders, you've got your head. And my dog. Discussed, and, and the dog. 
what could rotate uh, about 120 degrees? A head can just do it. A head, yeah, pretty much. So if there was a, something connected to you, but your torso okay, so couldn't do it. Unless you well, put I your mean, head down well, and bend forwards. Well, if it's a case of you half bend your torso one degree, good. Rotate your entire body and then rotate the head the, the next bit. It's a large motion, but it's possible. That would be useful because there's, there's basically uh, micro-rotation and then translation. So the, that would be to move something. The thing is, okay, admittedly, we, you know, we've kind of preset ourselves up with a, a concept while back, but the whole idea of using that low counter is not counterproductive to us. Yes, lying on the floor and twisting your torso <laughs> is just rolling around. <laughs> Worming your way across the kitchen floor, yeah. All right, but now, now we don't need a modified kitchen. Actually, yeah, none of this actually requires so now we're back to you, you can yeah, use... everything is still fine. Mm -hmm. Although, um, the, other, the other advantage of having gone that low kitchen was the dog could then have helped you a hell of a lot. Yeah. What's easier for the dog to do? Attach something to that you can use your shoulders with or use something that you, you basically have to use your face to manipulate? Well, at the same time, the dogs, okay, they take a long time to train. Not everyone has availability to have, be able to obtain probably them. Probably quite expensive. So, and, and yeah, obviously they maintain the dog and stuff. They can be trained to feed themselves, I'm sure. Maybe it's better to step aside and say, okay, if you've got the dog, the dog can help you with other activities, but maybe you can make a cup of coffee yourself. Yeah. So let, let, let's put the dog, let the dog go around outside for a bit first uh, and get back to making a cup of coffee. Let's, say, let's try and make it ourselves. Um, okay, so we can then ro rotate. We've now been able to pour our coffee beans into our coffee brewer. Now we've got to screw the damn thing in. I've got to put water in first. Yeah. But that's okay. exactly the same problem. We yeah, yeah, it's the same problem. Yeah. If you were, yeah. if you were a Nescafe fan, you'd have to up in the kettle. So the yeah. pouring function is the same thing you use to flip the, the exactly, coffee beans yeah. over. So that's not too there, there, there are health issues when associated with now you're dealing with a boiling liquid. But pretty much here on out, you're dealing with a boiling liquid. Yes. Um, so the care has to be taken, I think, in general. Uh, okay, yeah, so you, you pour you pour and you brew. Okay, screwing. But yeah. I mean, screwing can be... Okay, you've got to lift no, and you've got and to rotate. You've got to lift and rotate. Uh, and and I know with my one, I, I would hate to try and attach anything to my face to try and use that. <laughs> uh, what if it's a case of the lid you hold solid and you rotate the container? Yeah, that'll work. You just give me another brilliant idea. Instead of rotating the thing you're putting into the machine, what about rotating the machine? Because you could use your legs to do that. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a nice so you just machine. move where the problem is. Yeah. Relocate the entire problem to being that. Yeah, that works fine. Okay. So that's safe alignment as a function that you'd want yes. to use this thing. Okay. And then it's a matter of pushing a button and... Yeah, push a button. You've got a nose. You've got feet if you really want to go mm -hmm. that particular route. All right. Make sure you've got your cup. Cup, I think you could pretty much you'd be able to stand it in terms of picking up and moving it. The issue of drinking the cup. Straw. <sighs> Not a big fan of straw in my coffee, but yeah... Yeah, I mean, okay, I mean, yeah, it solves the problem. I mean, Otherwise, your Labrador is going to need an asbestos <laughs> mouth insert. <laughs> Sorry, asbestos is bad. Yeah. You shouldn't use asbestos. <laughs> it's an option. Yeah. It hopefully won't win. All right. Huh. I think but I again, it's, it's, it's quite difficult to do. Um, once you've ended up tackling a problem and thinking about it, the actual design part becomes really easy. Yeah, because you really just have to think think all of these things through. In some cases, it helps to just unpack what do you do to make a cup of coffee? Start with that. We do it enough that we can just go it on the fly. But sometimes, with some designs, you kind of got to pack it down to a couple of steps at a time. What do I do? Then I do. And then before you even step to double amputees and, and things like that, start with that bit of a, a functional look at what the hell just happened. And then go back from there. And also, I think to be really good at, at what design is, you have to put yourself into a variety of positions and think, well, I can do this because I've got five fingers on my hand. But yeah. if I didn't have a thumb, how would I, how would I do? Could I change a wheel with only four fingers? Um, oh, and then are you designing a system for every single person on the planet? Is your design specifically for that person missing a thumb? Or is it just a standard wheel changing device? In which case... Probably having a standard wheel chain device that happens to be able to be used by a person missing a thumb is maybe a bit on the much side. 
Definitely. But then, if you look at the, do a product review on wheel changing devices, they exist, so there's very little market space for you. But for one with person out of thumb, no, 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 there isn't one. So now you've got a, you've got a gap in the market you've identified. That's true, and there's that other golden thing that you know people only. I mean, you can't really sell uh, sell useless items, uh, not in this day and age. No, certainly not. Uh, people do reviews. Whereas back in the day, yeah. people would buy them because it sounded cool. It had a cool name and good glow mail advert. Yeah, something on TV. These days, there are reviews all over the place, and uh -huh. people actually check the reviews before they purchase anything. Yeah, so it's very really difficult to sell them something which you think is good. Yeah. Um, well, there you go. You got to sell it. You got to well sell it in the idea of convincing the person you actually need this. Hundred percent right. Yeah. All right. So in terms of a a short sort of wrap up. Yeah. Um, this was just episode one. Definitely. Um, we'd like to continue this. We are planning on integrating some of your uh, more favored and less favorite lectures into the mix as well, <laughs> just to show you how good and bad they are at this. Uh, and how differently be, they think. Yeah. And how, or, or, or how little they think, actually. Um, so what we, we'd like is, uh, we will be uh, putting up a Google form yeah. where um, suggestions, comments, etc. can be can be put in. We can cover topics like, uh, instead of focusing on the titles that need to go into a design report, what is the actual content that needs to be done? And then how do you get that across? And no, I'm not giving you the answer to your design project. And we're not doing rubrics either. Engineers no. are not about rubrics and uh, marks. No. But if you've got a problem like a, um, a DJ uh, station for an animal to, to be able to use, how do you unpack that that's problem one. Yeah. Um, how do you solve it? What calculations would you need to do, which is actually the easiest part? Pretty much. And then how would you report it? That's the hardest part. Yeah. And until you actually finish this magical thing called design, you can't even think about what it is you need to report. Exactly. And that's the number one mistake you make is before you know it, you've written a whole report on making a device that a brown left footed Labrador can, can attach to a double arm amputee at the shoulders so that they can make coffee when, you know, how many double arm amputees drink coffee? Yeah. Is it a problem worth solving? Exactly. You can't just state it as because you think it is or you hope it is because you have to complete this design project or do it for a client or whatever cases. You actually, there needs to be a purpose and there needs to be actually be a reason behind it, unfortunately. All right. All right, that's enough for today, and yeah, cheers.